Nathan, can you try to do a, a just a one octave F scale to see how many notes you can get out? Oh, 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 is that you have to project what you're going to do, right, Nate? Because if you don't think you can do it, it's not going to happen, right? Okay, well, let's make sure, to make sure the height is right. You need to sit up straight for this. And you need to be able to blow really hard because this instrument takes okay. a lot of air. So you need to focus your air like this, Nate. Yep. Okay. Just play an F. Uh, so this, pretend this is the whisper key. It's not, but pretend it is. Um, so that's basically where your hand position okay. needs to go. Your first finger goes here, your second finger goes here, and this is the C key, this is the E flat key. Okay, um, my hand is not pressing hard enough. Yeah, to you, you, we're just a trying lot to of times you have to grow into this kind of instrument. It's a, it's a, yeah, you, you gotta focus, yeah, Nate. Down here, it's all keys, it doesn't work that um, which is why I'm holding it. Um, so <laughs> this is where your first finger goes, this is where your second finger goes, this is where your third finger goes. Yep, and then these are your pinky keys, just like on the instrument. Oh, that's weird, because the way they're... Which one's the B-flat? Uh, B-flat is this top, top key right here. Okay, yeah. let's just, I wanted to hear an F. See if you can do an F. All right, let's just see. Okay, rounder aperture. All right, let's, an F. let's see if we can do an F scale. One octave, let's see. Low. Low. So you're, you're an octave too high. Your left hand is going to have to be, uh, so this finger needs to come way up higher. One more key. What? Yep, and then this finger needs to come up here. Now your hands are in the right place. Okay, and remember it's lower. So and you don't have to press this key down at all. So there's no whisper key on this. So you just you just leave your thumb hanging. Yeah, so try to go a little bit bottom. So E, F. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Don't give up on it. Keep blowing. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. We want to hear a scale. Yep, that's right. Yep. Yep, and just lift this finger. It's a B flat, just like on bassoon. Um, so what you want to do is you want to put, yep, same fingering. Yep. So one, two, three is down here. Yep. There you go. One, two, three. Low F key. Low E key, which is the middle one. And then yep, those two. Okay, then you're gonna have to focus because it's. Yep. That's it. Cool. <laughs> you were in Delaware, you guys get along. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. So how's it feel, Nate? Watch your read. Step back. Is there a strap that you use? Uh, no, usually. I Basically, just you have to hold the instrument up. <laughs> I mean, well, what you, a lot of the weight is going to end up falling into this it? hand. So there's a, actually a brace here that that kind of yeah, was you. Like feeling that. yeah so that's kind of your anchor point mm -hmm. um and then with your other hand it's just kind of there honestly um but because it has an end peg you know it it's, takes a lot of weight 
it, yeah, it takes a lot of the weight. So the most of the weight of the instrument's going into the floor, and you're just kind of holding this it up. Around. Oh, oh. Yeah, you wouldn't carry it. Oh. I would. I How would take this to rehearsal, of, and I would have to uncurl my. How head. much does a contra vocal cost? Um, depending on the maker, a Fox one is seven hundred fifty dollars, which yeah, is not bad. That's the same as. Um, but a Heckle one is about thirteen hundred. That's how you <laughs> <laughs> It goes up. Yeah. Then it goes way up. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm done. Okay. Cool. That was cool, right? So what do you think, Nick? I, I was like, impressed that he was able to get a sound out of it. Yeah, it's actually when you have a good read, it's it's really not hard. It mm -hmm. does take more air overall. Than I couldn't the sound. really feel how much air, but I could feel it taking just a little bit more air. Yeah. So, so what kind of read is the gray one? Um, it's like actually it's a read that uh, a guy who used to work here made. <laughs> um, he basically, so what we do is when we have a new read maker, including me, including anyone, including my other bassoon specialist, Trevor, if they want to make reads, they actually have to uh, send me a sample, mm -hmm. and then I have to play it, and I have to say, okay, yeah, this is fine, or, you know, maybe you should tweak this because our, you know, if you're making a finished read for us, it has to be able to be playable out of the box. Um, and so uh, he used to work here. He left in the beginning of July because he was Brazilian, and he couldn't get his visa renewed, which is very unfortunate. But, wait, wait, wait. I want you to he, try this one. Um, he made this read for me to just show me like how his reads are. And cool. I just kind of keep it around because it's very easy to play. So yeah. I figure it, you know, it's really good for someone who's never played one of these instruments before. Yeah. My read's a lot more resistant. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like, you know, open and like you play it, couldn't play yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, that read is super easy to play. So it's really good for anyone who's, who's playing the instrument for the first time. Mm -hmm. But there's... Can I ask a favor? Mm -hmm. So I know that the contraforte is in the process of being repaired, and it may mm -hmm. take a while, however long it takes. Yeah. Could you make a video of you playing it? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. And we'll, yeah, I've had actually a lot of people very curious about the fact that we have that instrument in the store. <laughs> so I have, I have someone from the Kansas City Symphony who said, you know, I, I heard you had a contraforte in. Can I come in and play it? Uh -huh. like, can I fly in and play when it's ready? And I said, yeah, sure. And he emailed me two weeks ago and said, is it going to be ready in two weeks? And I said, <laughs> you're going to lie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That would be cool if he was here with us, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, then the, uh, the contra bassoonist in the Minnesota Orchestra, he, on Saturday after they were done with everything, he said, I noticed a contraforte in there. I was wondering, when it's done, can I... Like take it to rehearsal one day <laughs> and play it in the orchestra, and I said, "Yeah, sure." See, that's <laughs> I don't cool. Care. Yeah, awesome. So, so yeah, there's a lot of interest. Yeah, there. Well, mostly I think it's curiosity because yeah. not a lot of people really have ever seen it in person. They've yeah. only heard about it. Yeah. And it is just, so the only person who plays it professionally in the U.S. is um, his name is Lou Lipnick. He plays in the National Symphony Orchestra, so I used to hear it all the time. It is. But I studied with the principal bassoon of the National Symphony Orchestra, and she was always like, I hate that instrument. <laughs> <laughs> because it's too it is, loud, it the is different so sounds. loud, yeah. it is so hard to blend with for a bassoon section. So mm -hmm. when it, in a piece like like in the planets in Jupiter, there's that pop, 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 and it's all bassoons. And then you have this blah, 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 Yeah, blah, it sounds blah. like a sax, yeah. Yeah, basically. It's like a big wooden saxophone, so it doesn't really... It doesn't really work yeah. for that kind Barry of stuff. Barry and our band is just 
Yeah. And I love Barry Sachs. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I used to play in a saxophone quartet. 